Happy Sabbath. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to the Health Nugget this Sabbath morning, and uh, Happy New Year for those who have not met. Uh, I would like this day to set the pace for the year for the Health Ministries uh, 2022. We want to thank God for um, uh, the church for giving the health department an opportunity to provide information, engage the worshippers and online viewers on health issues that are relevant to the communities we serve. And today I want to um, use a case study of the mental health and the role of church to provide a biblical perspective of what we need to think about when we as Christians need to um, focus on the, both the physical and the spiritual needs of the people. The purpose of this session is to lay the emphasis on the need for the church as a family of believers to reorient ourselves on how we handle mental health issues. Not because it's the only thing, but it helps us serve both the physical and the spiritual needs. Now, I'll dwell on two aspects. What are the, some of the misunderstandings about mental health that are common in the church? And what is the relationship between mental health and the mission of the church, which is I will go, that is reflected at the back of the audience? Now, I will provide um, from a public health perspective what mental health is. I will not go into the details of some of the examples that we will dwell, deal with over in, in, in the course of the year. But WHO focuses and defines mental health as a state of well-being, so which an individual realizes his own abilities and cope with the normal stresses of life. And it focuses on how that helps an individual contribute to the community. However, this definition does not mention the family in which most of these challenges occur. It also emphasizes the work environment, which may not always be realistic at all, because not everyone is in a work environment. However, it does define mental health in the context of relationship and experience in the community. Now today, therefore, I want to uh, indulge you a little bit by saying, does mental health matter? And from the statistics globally, we know that common mental disorders affect one in five adults. So if I pick five adults today in this audience or online, probably we've experienced some aspects of mental health, mental health disorders. Now, mental health disorders also affect about one in seven a percent of adults, the major ones. So common ones, maybe one in five, the major ones, one in seven. About 20% of adolescents do suffer from mental health disorders. Now, half of all the mental illness that are experienced begin by the age of 14. And it contributes a lot to disability, and there are ways of measuring that disability. For example, we do measure um, disability by year, years lived with disability, which uh, is about 32% of all mental health accounts to, or, about, or disability adjusted life years, of which 13% of all mental health disorders contribute to disability adjusted life years. Mental health also uh, basically shortens your life expectancy by 10 to 20 years. So if David says 70 is the maximum you, know, you can live probably, imagine 10, 20 years below that uh, is what you can live if you have mental disorders. Now it increases the risk of all cause mortalities compared to the general population. And the people with the highest cause mortality ratios are those with substance abuse or those who suffer from anorexia nervosa. Uh, borderline personalities such as you know, depression, bipolar disorders have the greatest suicide risk. So they may not necessarily lead to death, but sorry, uh, to, 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 um, uh, uh, to adju uh, disability adjusted life years, but also may lead to um, suicide. Now, the mental health paradox in the context that those who are um, disadvantaged in the society are the ones who suffer most the poor, the homeless the prisoners, certain ethnic minority groups, gender and sexual minority groups, the deaf and other disabilities. Now, wealthier countries seem to, with more resources, experience a greater overall of mental health than poorer countries. However, within each society, there are differential uh, uh, differences. Now, I want now to take you through five sets of slides that will give an impression to you what mental health from the Christian perspective should be. It can be a physical issue. One of the consequences of the fall uh, of, of, of sin is 
the imperfect nature that it brought to the world. Now, there are biblical figures who experience deep feelings of despair, anger, and depression. David, Job, Elijah, Jonah, you can name them. Uh, while some of this may be attributed to some form of spiritual warfare, it can also manifest in, it manifests in itself in the physical nature. Now, mental health can also be a spiritual issue. When we are confronted with our sinful nature, the convictions can be very overwhelming, leading to feelings of grief and despair. Our examples are David, when he's confronted with his affair with Bathsheba. Other characters, such as Daniel, also experience mental anguish. And there are many other numerical accounts of spiritual and physical that seems to have been very connected as represented in the book of Mark and Luke. Now, what are the, some of the common misunderstandings of mental health? And there are many of them. First, that emotional mental suffering is evidence of failure of trust God. You know, I'm doing poorly, I'm experiencing this because I don't trust God. And the consequence of that is that, um, that we need to be able to understand that um, trust God, believe in his promises, and repent so that then you will avoid the anguish that goes with it. And the most appropriate action is to not to ignore the physiological costs that are associated with that. The second um, misunderstanding is mental health or emotional health issues are a barrier to experiencing God. Some people believe that when you're doing that, then you don't experience the true value of, 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 of having a connection with God. And then people shy away from pursuing spiritual growth because they feel that they're not experiencing a relationship. But the, act, the, the, the possible action or appropriate fact should be do not over-spiritualize mental health illness or condition. So seek help when appropriate. The other uh, misunderstanding that meant matters of faith exist within some kind of bubble. So that is almost complete, completely inseparable or separable from the realities of mental illnesses. So then it makes people not seek mental health um, um, as services or even we disconnect in our Christian services, we disconnect mental health issues from, from our spiritual uh, action. And we hope this year we are going to incorporate that more. Uh, the final misunderstanding, and there are many others, uh, some people also reflect that mental health is a demonic possession. Of course, there are ex expressions of that in the Bible as 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. And then what people end up doing, they conduct spiritual exorcism. Um, while there is the link between demonic possession and mental illness, um, some of those causes may not necessarily be as a result of demonic experience, and therefore they need to seek, we need to seek appropriate action. So what does the Bible tell us about mental health? So there are four learnings. Number one, mental health is a priority for a Christian mission because Jesus summarizes his mission in reaching the poor, the captive, those living with disability, and those struggling with possession, with oppression. And therefore, it should be part and parcel of our, our social fabric in charge. Number, lesson number two is that Jesus focuses on restoration and healing, including mental health issues. And he, he demonstrated that when he, he healed many different conditions including the guy at Gesson who actually um, was possessed, uh, the men were possessed by behavioral symptoms, they had difficulty in race training, they were holding and self, you know, harming themselves. Perhaps they were, uh, would have been diagnosed as mania in the current um, uh, mental health uh, spectrum, usually associated with bipolar disorder. But we are saying that Jesus actually focuses on restoration. Number three, Jesus was concerned with the issues that predisposes us to the mental health. Anxiety of life will not end. Do not be guilty about anxiety because Jesus agonized himself at Gethsemane um, uh, just before crucifixion. Paul also talks about his daily anxiety with struggling with sins. So life in the kingdom of God is not a life without anxiety as we continue to live in this one. Number four is that intrinsic but not extrinsic religiosity is good for mental health. Uh, Jesus wants about the distinction between religious practices that is oriented outwardly towards what others think rather than inwardly and having a Godward intention and orientation. So human beings flourish in relationship with God um, and therefore we don't just practice our religious practices overly directed towards others, what others think about us, but what relation do you have with God? So um, uh, friends, I would like to summarize by saying that mental health is about our capacity to fulfill our vocations, our calling both individually and collectively as a church. Uh, fulfilling our Christian vocation will not be easy, 
Uh, Paul understands this and he says, I'm always through suffering. Um, the gospel is no easy way out of challenges of stress-free life, but actually it, it empowers us uh, to be able to deal with circumstances like. So mental health is not a failure of Christian faith. It's a challenge to a Christian faithfulness. And my parting shot, we need to reintegrate faith within the fabric of mental health care. We need to think about mental health as part of us, uh, a central mission to the church. And the church needs to have a vision of, um, that reflects this. And this year we hope that we will endeavor as a health department to um, both meet your physical and, 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 and um, social needs and with, through information, through practical demonstration of uh, providing healthcare services. And we will be sending out a small survey across different departments so that you can give us the topics of interest that we could cover this year. And we will focus on ensuring that, for example, if it's the women ministry, we can meet your needs if it's the AMO, if it's the children, or other vulnerable groups in the, in the society. So caring for people means being alert to the physical problems that require medical treatments and spiritual problems. Um, and that would be our focus this year. May God bless you, and we hope that through um, your support that the health department will be able to provide those needs that are relevant to our community we serve. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity of giving us to work with you this year. And Lord, as a division in, within the church, give us the opportunity and the wisdom to be able to be relevant to your people. May your blessings be upon us this Sabbath. In Jesus' name I believe and pray.